Alright, so in my first video on this topic, I discussed some key points about composition, and we essentially went over this image and broke it down into bite-sized components that we could focus on recreating. And in this video, we're going to move straight into Blender and sort of see what the approach looks like in action. So I'd recommend watching the first video if you haven't already, but you likely have. So let's just get right into it. And the first thing that I want to jump into is creating a block out of the scene. And now, block outs don't just have to be all made out of cubes and all of that. What I mean is I just want to create the shapes that serve the most importance to that image composition we just talked about. And the grouse at the top of that is also pretty important for the composition, otherwise the sand slope looks quite boring. And so I've um, imported in some grouse from another project, which has just got a nice little anime texture on it. And then we've got a hair simulation going on to make the actual like grass fronds. I also at this stage did import a 3D placeholder character so that I could have something just to look at in 3D space as to where Mahito was meant to be. The water is of course a very important part to be a placeholder as to where the land is meant to cut off into liquid. Now it was definitely very important to start bringing in volumetrics after the landscaping had been done a little bit because volumetrics are going to be my tool for this project for creating all of the lighting effects basically volumetrics with differences in density in different places like clouds and then shining really really powerful lights through them i'm using a wind to kind of shape the grass and where it's blowing so i can choose the sort of way that it looks a little bit better you can see i'm sort of tugging the land more into the shape of the reference image once more this is the sort of thing which you can just keep chipping away at. The important thing is that we get the slope initially and then you can just keep refining that throughout. Textures are also something which I messed around with quite a bit, especially for the sand, because they um, went from looking too loud to looking too realistic, because the scene is sort of semi-stylized, semi especially with the character. And now for the lighting approach, you can see basically what I've done is I've imported a spotlight and I've actually enabled a node system on the spotlight which allows me to essentially create a caustic texture using um, the Voronoi node. And so this is allowing me to split this one spotlight into lots of individual beams of light and then by shining that from a corner and having a couple of them, I can get these light shafts which shine really beautifully through the um, clouds and the volumetrics at the cost of my GPU's life. And I'd say it's quite worth it because very quickly it starts to look very cool, especially once I start colouring the um, light shafts and positioning them in a way that they're mostly going in a similar direction. And once they start hitting the water, when I drag the water out that far, that also creates a very, very nice effect. And in order to round out the effect that I've got going with all the light shafts and make it kind of like layered with um, multiple sort of colors of clouds, I needed to, um, to bring in more volumetrics. If I wanted the approach to stay consistent um, with volumetrics, I basically brought in different volumetrics of some different sizes based on the same original ones that were used for the rest of the clouds and then I basically recolored them and positioned them in a way that they were kind of creating the effect of layered multicolored clouds and I think that the end result definitely doesn't look quite as nice as the original watercolor but it has its own charm and I think it's definitely the um, big strong suit of the render which is what I was hoping for. You can see that my approach for the water foam as well was actually to um, take a top-down view of an ocean basically and then I basically ran the color of that through a color ramp and crunched it to create an alpha map of my own. And that allows the foam to stay opaque and the water in between to be transparent. And so we get the effect of foam sitting above the other water shader, which I have. And you can see that basically creates the sort of um, illusion of the sort of foam interactions. Without it, the water doesn't really look like it's meshing very well with the um, sand. You can see if I take this away, it looks really, really smooth. It looks it looks cool, but there are definitely clear foam waves in the reference image, and we want to manage to recreate the vibes, basically. Oh yeah, so the way that I went about the sand texture for the final render was basically just to crunch it um, slightly in a color ramp, the base color that is, and that just creates this um, sort of slightly bit crushed looking effect. Um, there's less colors going on basically, there's less um, color detail and um, the way that I got Mahito in here. So I went into GIMP and I basically cut him out there, I cut away the background using the eraser tool and then because he had no feet in this picture I drew him some feet and then kind of like um, drew a bunch of um, different scuff layers over it to try and blend that into the rest of his body and I added a tiny bit of drop shadow to where his feet would be as well and in retrospect I feel like it's quite nice to have the original Mihito there amongst the environment that I've sort of tried to create for him. This um, blend file 
this entire scene with pack textures and everything is all up on my Ko-Fi and it is free for members so for all of um, you guys who are already subscribed on here you guys can pick this up straight away for no cost at all and so the nice thing about being subscribed is you can just keep grabbing new stuff and old stuff and it's all just going to kind of build up into a collection. I'd just like to say that with stuff like this it's kind of um, topical for me to say it because I spent so long putting off this project and not working on it that a lot of people, um, everyone's different, but a lot of people are able to learn a lot by just starting and by having all of this little mini, mini failures. Um, we can glean a lot more than if we wait until we feel perfectly able to work on it until weeks or even months have passed because I actually had this project at 80%, 90% completion since a month or two ago and it has just been sitting there with me procrastinating working on a character and when I finally did it I realized hey maybe this is not so practical to do this at all maybe this is not what this render needs gosh it took like maybe like two three hours and, and I put all of that, that that small amount of time off for so long because I was um, unsure and uncertain and so it's often not worth that so just get into it I'm gonna put out a poll soon on something I'm not sure if it will be a poll the next project or if it will be just a poll on future video stuff past this next project but I will put out a poll soon like I mentioned briefly in the previous video this kind of project will be material for a possible um, Studio Ghibli related um, course that I may work on in the future just more stuff kind of like coming from different angles of recreating Studio Ghibli and other anime styles within Blender not in terms of the actual like cell shading style and all of that, we've already gone over that a while ago, but more just in creating these sort of artistic vibes. As always, thank you so very much to all of my loyal supporters, all of my subscribers on Ko-Fi and such. Um, you guys are all killing it. You guys are all being great. Thank you so very much for watching. It's been Yuzin, and goodbye.